If you need better Wi-Fi coverage, don't get an extender. Instead, you want to get a professional wireless access point. In this video, I'll show you how to add a Unify access point like this to your existing non-Unify router. So whether it's a Netgear Wi-Fi router, TP-Link, or whatever else. My name is Bogdan Shpurny, founder of Apex One Tech. All my content is free to you. All I ask is that you subscribe and smash the like button. And if you need secure, reliable Wi-Fi at your business or organization, please reach out to me using the links in the video description below. Okay, overview, high level, what we're going to do is one of these access points from Ubiquiti. So these are all the U6, this means it's Wi-Fi 6, and you can compare them here. I'll have them all linked in the video description for you to look at which one you would like to add. The most cost efficient here is the U6 Lite. It's about $100, U6 Plus. That's what I have here. It's the same form factor, about 6.3 inches. This comes in about $130. Okay, so this is the kind of access point that I'm referring to. Again, if you're adding this to an existing Unify network, then this is not the video. I'll have a link for you in the description. This is if you want to add this to your existing non-Unify network. And this is an overview of typical layout here. I'm streaming my iPad to my display. So you can have, this is the back of a Netgear router. It's a R7000 in this example. That's what we'll be using in the demo. So you can see here, typically you'll have a router with a port like this, a WAN port here. Okay, so that's this guy. And then these are all LAN ports. So from here, you know, you can't connect directly to the access point, which is down here flipped around upside down so you can see it. You need to also power it. So the way this access point works, the right here that's circled in red, that's the RJ45 input. And it both receives internet and power through that RJ45 port using one of those ethernet cables. So your normal typical router does not have PoE coming off the back of it. Okay, so it's usually connected like this. You have you know the WAN port in yellow, goes to your modem, or from your modem, to your router or Wi-Fi router. And then you at least have at least one LAN port typically, okay? So this one has four. And in this case, if you don't have a PoE switch, you will use something like this, and this guy right here. This is from Ubiquiti, but there's other ones, and I'll have them linked for you. You just need to have the correct one with the correct uh, power output. So this is a PoE injector or PoE adapter. And what it does, you see you take it from the router, from one of the LAN ports, or just the one if you have one, and you plug it a, a ethernet cable into this one that's on the right, that has these two kind of um, arrows, left and right. So that's where the data is coming from, your internet. And then this other one, the lightning bolt symbol, indicating that it's PoE. So this is where you connect directly to your access point, to the ubiquity access point here. And then this is just showing you the other side of the same PoE adapter. You know, you, you plug that into your wall for power. Okay, the other option here is something like this, and you might already have a PoE switch so if you do have a PoE switch, uh, it'll be indicated on your switch. But again, it's kind of similar where you come off of your router into your PoE switch and then off of your PoE switch into the unified access point. So just to summarize what you will need, if you're using a PoE adapter, you know, you're going to need two Ethernet cables. So one here, one there. I mean, same thing if you, if you need a going off a PoE switch, but if it's already installed, you just need this one, the one in red here actually one Ethernet cable. And then you'll also want to grab this app here called Unify, okay, in blue with this white circle, actually one of their access points. And that's it. So let, let's go ahead and get this set up. All right, so first thing, we want to connect your access point with your Ethernet cable. So in my case, it's coming off a of PoE switch, but it can be off of your PoE adapter. Okay, then you'll notice that it's booting up and that's indicated by this white flashing light. So this whole rim might be difficult to see it here, but this whole rim flashes slowly in white, even the logo itself. Okay, so then we want to open, first of all, if you already have Wi-Fi, like in your network, most likely you do if you're adding this the way I'm showing, just be sure you're connected to that Wi-Fi and that helps out. And I guess I should point out that with the, specifically with this one, so this is the U6 Plus, it does not have Bluetooth built in, okay? All right, so once this light turns solid white, it's ready to be set up. So again, it might be hard to see, but it is solid white. If you see that it comes on solid blue, I mean, you might have bought a used one or something like that, 
or used it elsewhere, you do want to reset it. Okay, that means it was adopted somewhere else. And there is right by the Ethernet jack that little port. You know, you can even put a mechanical pencil in there that will work. So when this is powered on, you know, push push something there for at least five to ten seconds, and you'll see the light change and it'll reset. Okay, that'll make sure that you can set this up properly. So just so you know, Unify calls this standalone mode. Okay, when you're setting this up to something else without a unified network. Okay, so let's open the Unify app. You may need to create an account. All right, so you see here I don't have anything else. It did find the U6 Plus. It's saying it's initializing. If this device did not pop up, you could click on the top right there, the plus sign, and it should show it to you here. And again, you need to be connected to the correct Wi-Fi. You can click this need help and access point and gives you a little bit more instructions, even the reset right there, instructions if you need that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and set this one up. And I did want to point out that if you do not have Wi-Fi currently running, you just have a router with no Wi-Fi or something's broken, or maybe also your Bluetooth is off, right? It will not show you any devices. So now if I click at the plus sign at the top right, and you know I don't have Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, that's fine. Just click Need Help at the bottom there. Scroll over to Access Point at the top and click Manual Setup. So allow the camera, of course. And here, as it says, you just want to scan the QR code on, on the back of the access point. So you power it on, connect it to your router, and you're going to scan the QR code. And as it says here, you want to find the QR code on the back of the access point and just scan that in. And also if it doesn't scan, you can manually type it in as well. And it's going to prompt you to connect to the access point. Just tap on connect, click join, this Wi-Fi network that it creates temporarily to configure it. And so after this point, it's essentially going to be the same as if you were just setting up this access point to an existing Wi-Fi network. So it says AP connected. Okay, so back to the other method. So just tap on it, it says we're connected. Okay, and now it's pointing out that it's going to set this up as a standalone device since there's no Unify Cloud Gateway, nothing else. So let's go ahead and set up without Unify. And it just gives you here the Unify advantages. Yes, that's true. Uh, you can read that all here. With this setup, you should know that the limitation is you can essentially just have one Wi-Fi name or SSID uh, that will work on a 2.4 and a 5 gigahertz. So let's go ahead and continue. So we can name it, I'll leave it as is. Well, maybe let's actually then click next. Okay, so here in Wi-Fi setup, if you're adding this to your existing Wi-Fi network, you want to name this Wi-Fi, the SSID, the same as your current one and the same password so that all your devices, they just connect the same. Whether it's your existing Wi-Fi router or this new access point, it's, it's just going to connect to the best one. Here in advanced options, so you can separate the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz if you need to. And maybe if your current one does that, uh, sometimes like maybe smart home devices, they really struggle with connecting to networks or to Wi-Fi access points that combine the two. So here, so I do have them separately, so I'll do the same thing here. So I'll just fill this out. Okay, and unfortunately, as you can see, I thought you can do this, but you actually cannot rename the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi name because uh, my previous router actually had a setup where the default one was a 2.4. And then for the 5G gigahertz, it added the five, dash 5G. Uh, so that is not great. So I'll probably, in my instance, keep these on the same one and I'll click next. All right, now here, this is the password for the device. So the, by default, well, you actually can't change it. The username is admin. And then you can set a password here to whatever you want. So they have some crazy password here. Let's just change that. Okay, and I'll just put that in for now. But you don't want to do that. Set it to your own password so no one else can reset it. And this is, again, like it's saying, so you can access this device. You won't have to reset it to like, reconnect to it. Then click Next. Okay, so it's saying about 2 minutes, 30 seconds. Okay, 1 minute, 5 seconds left. Uh, that's quick. Okay, so for me, that took about 30 seconds. And we need to join this new Wi-Fi network directly from the access point in order to configure it. So let's go ahead and join this one. It brings us back to the home view here. We can click on this. We can see what we set up. We can see what's connected. It should just be this device. Okay, you can see some details about the devices connected directly just to this AP. You can click locate device and I'll just flash this 
blue light several times. Okay, and by the way, it will shine blue when it's all set up and it's functioning. And you can also restart it from here. And if you want to change those same settings, just click configure. So we can again rename it. You can also turn off the LED. This is maybe in a bedroom or something. You can turn off the radios and even configure bandwidth channel, all of that good stuff. And here under radios, you, you could disable one if you need to, 2.4 or 5 gigahertz, if you need to do that for whatever reason. And you know, your if it's up to date, you can update it here. And then, so your wireless lands here, you can actually, so okay, this is good. It looks like we can rename our 2 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz here. So let's try that just to make it match. Yeah, and there we go. And you could update the password, change the name if you need to again. Okay, so we'll need to click save and most likely, so it highlights that in green that we changed that and we'll probably have to reboot. Yep, updating configuration. Okay, so the device is restarting and it brings me back to this page. So great, it did change the SSID of the 2.4 gigahertz. That's awesome. So everything is good to go. Okay, and one last thing just wanted to point out in case, in case you didn't know, but you could actually replace, you can use this new access point that you added and turn off the existing access point that you have built into your router, your Netgear or TP-Link. And that way, first of all, they won't interfere with each other because you could get one of these, for example, I don't see it here. Where's the LR? There's a long range here that you can get. I'm just filtering this out. Here we go, U6 long range, for example, right? Covers 2,000 square feet. So most likely your existing, your existing built-in Wi-Fi router does not do that. So you could actually just place this unit next to your router and disable the access point from your existing router. So I'll show you how to do that with Netgear right now, but it'll be very similar on other devices. You just need to log in to your router. You might actually have a physical button as well on your Wi-Fi router to disable the access point. So typically your default router will typically have the address of 192.68.1.1. You can type that in. For Netgear, you can also type in routerlogin.net. And I can't tell you what your password is here. Usually it's on the back of your router for you to log in. It's typically admin and then some password again that's on the back of your router if you haven't changed that. Okay, so after you log in, it'll look something like this and you just want to go to your wireless settings. So here under wireless, you'll have something that has, you know, a check mark or disable SSID. So we'll go ahead and check, check all this off. Same thing for the five gigahertz if you have that separately. Okay, and just click apply. So it's just telling you that you're not going to have wireless access to it and that's totally fine. We have a new access point, so let's click okay. Okay, so I did lose connection to it, which makes sense, it's rebooting right now and it'll, it'll be back on without an access point. Okay, so the Netgear device, it did reboot. It is showing me, you know, I actually still have a guest network I need to disable here as well. But you can connect back, you know, on your mobile device to the access point. And I see now that essentially all my devices are reconnected and I can see them in that Unify app that now they're there, right? Because they can't connect anywhere else. So that's how I'm getting Wi-Fi right now. Hit the like button and subscribe if you learned something new. If this helped you out, let me know in the comment section and what you were able to pair this with. Or if you weren't, let me know and maybe I can help you out or anyone else in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Take care.